Daniel Ricciardo and Renault, a match made in heaven. Now you guys may think that I've gone mental. No, I haven't, not yet. Because in today's video, I'm going to illustrate why in my opinion, this is a match made in heaven. And why Daniel, of course, has made the right decision to go to Renault. And don't worry, I will show plenty of evidence of why it is the right decision. And why this is a great partnership. So if you want to find out from me why it is a match made in heaven, then make sure to check out this video. First though, let's go to 2013 where Daniel Ricciardo was at Toro Rosso. And this was around the time that Daniel Ricciardo got promoted to the Red Bull Renault team for 2014. To replace fellow Aussie Mark Webber. And at the time, this was a great move because Red Bull were the kings of Formula 1 and the most dominant team in Formula 1. They had the best car and a four-time world champion. And it seemed as though no one could stop Red Bull. And together with Red Bull's partnership with Renault, surely it was the best place to go to for the new V6 hybrid era. Well, after the first few days of testing in 2014, it didn't seem that Red Bull and Renault were that invincible anymore. As they could barely complete running during any of the testing at either Jerez or Bahrain. To be honest, it's lucky that I'm able to show you these pictures because there's not many of the Red Bull car during 2014 pre-season testing. But once the season came around, Red Bull and Renault were definitely better than they were in testing. And Daniel Ricciardo had a great start to his Red Bull career with plenty of podium finishes coming along the way. And even at the 7th race in Canada, his first ever race win for Red Bull. But Red Bull was still having issues with their engine supply Renault, as Renault were not delivering the power that they should have. Leading to embarrassing performances for the Red Bull team at their home track at the Red Bull ring. Leading to this absolute gem of a quote by Christian Horner. It's safe to say the relationship turned very sour. But in 2014, Daniel Ricciardo did not really have any issues when it came to Renault. Yes, his car was lacking in power, but in terms of reliability issues, they went to his teammate Sebastian Vettel. Allowing Daniel Ricciardo to take a couple more race victories and have a great 2014 where he finished in the top three of the Drivers' Championship. So a great first season for Daniel at Red Bull and surely things can only improve from here. In testing in 2015, Red Bull might be trying to hide the new parts on their car with their new livery, but they can't hide the terrible pace. The Red Bull of 2015 is very, very bad. And that's shown up to be the case as the season got underway. And the reliability not only for Daniel Ricciardo but for Renault was so bad that after the Bahrain Grand Prix, Daniel Ricciardo only had one available new power unit left to use for the rest of the season before he started picking up some penalties. Because Renault had completely blown their load in the first four races. And as the season wore on, Renault's issues became even more apparent when it came to just power. Daniel was not having that many reliability issues, but he was not going anywhere in a car that was desperately slow. The Renault power unit was so bad in 2015 that they transformed Red Bull into a top team into a midfield team. What a marvellous accomplishment. But at least Daniel Ricciardo was still finishing the races. But even that came to a halt at Silverstone. Red Bull's car for the second half of the season may have improved, but the Renault reliability did not. As the reliability issues started to mount up. But hey, if you actually look at the end of 2015, Red Bull and Renault were making progress. And come on, 2015 is just one year. I'm sure Red Bull and Renault will be back at it in 2016. And well, it was clear to see from testing that the Red Bull car was definitely a big improvement on 2015. Leading to Daniel Ricciardo having one of the best seasons of his career. Getting plenty of podiums and even a race victory in Malaysia. And he never really had a reliability issue when it came to Renault. And this was the first time in the V6 hybrid era that Red Bull were finally going places with Renault. It was absolutely time to break out the shoeies and start celebrating surely Red Bull and Renault winning again. And surely with the new 2017 regulations where the Red Bull car should be better suited... Red Bull and Renault together are only going to improve and surely go for world championships very, very soon. 
as you may have predicted, Renault did not show up in 2017. And to a degree, so did Red Bull. But all the great work they did in 2016 was now all gone, as they were now miles off going for race victories and could barely get onto a podium at the start of 2017. Daniel coming into his home race for 2017, the first race of 2017, was hoping for a great weekend, where he could kick off the season with a bang. The only thing that was banging was his Renault power unit, as he broke down on the way to the grid and then ended up racing around three laps down, doing nothing. What a way to start the season. But then after that, the Renault reliability did improve for Daniel, but the power was poor. But at least Daniel was still getting plenty of podium finishes, and he even got a race win at Baku, one of the best race wins he will ever have. So Daniel was still doing his best, despite the issues that Renault had. But things in the second half of the season did start to improve from Red Bull and Renault's side as well. But Daniel could not capitalise on this, as at the end of the season, he had plenty of reliability issues, ending his season in a miserable way. Not exactly the best way to end a season, but I'm sure in 2018, Red Bull and Renault will get right back at it. And after testing in 2018, despite it being colder than Russia at times, the Red Bull and Renault package was definitely a lot stronger. And they'd be starting off 2018 definitely closer to race victories than they were the year before. But that doesn't mean the reliability issues won't be there as in Bahrain whilst running in P4, Daniel Ricciardo's power unit completely shut down after barely five laps. Despite that though, he still went on to win in Shanghai and even Monaco where Renault tried so desperately to take it away from him. But Daniel still overcame it and went on to win the Grand Prix. Daniel would only receive punishment for actually overcoming a Renault reliability issue. As from then on, the failures ramped up big time. As absolutely anything reliability wise for Daniel Ricciardo was going wrong such as the gearbox or the turbo. After a few failures, surely Daniel Ricciardo is thinking it cannot continue like this for the rest of 2018. Oh, you are so so wrong. As Renault screw you over so much that you have a mental breakdown in the pit lane at Suzuka. Even after that, you're thinking, maybe that's the breaking point. Oh no it isn't, because of the US and Mexican Grand Prix, possible podium finishes are took away. And from a Renault point of view, luckily, you end the season with no issues. But you had so many issues with the Renault power unit, you were basically sent into depression. Ending off a season where the car was definitely good, but not for you. Now considering Red Bull were going with Honda for 2019, surely Daniel Ricciardo was going to remain at the team and have a fresh start with a new engine supplier. Well he was definitely going to have a fresh start. He decided after the multitude of issues he was actually going to go to the Renault Works team. This definitely won't blow up in your face. And then we come to 2019, a season that has been very very poor. From a Daniel Ricciardo standpoint in terms of the results he has got, but mostly from a Renault standpoint. Because if you thought the failures and the issues had stopped, oh no they had not. As they had more reliability failures and actual issues with the aerodynamics of the car. Leading to Daniel Ricciardo so far in 2019 having mostly a miserable existence. Now you may think why am I calling this video again a match made in heaven? Well it's because from a failure standpoint it is. Daniel Ricciardo and Renault, whether it's at Red Bull or the Renault Works team, has been a disaster. As Renault's lack of power and poor reliability has led to Daniel Ricciardo down this path. And of course, I was being sarcastic. As Renault have basically ruined a big part of Daniel Ricciardo's career, but Daniel is not immune from this. At the end of the day, he chose to go to Renault, he made his bed, now he must lay in his bed of disappointment. Because looking at this, you can't tell me Daniel did not have prior warning before going to Renault. As he had three engine issues in 2015, four in 2017, and eight in 2018. And by the way, that's only including qualifying and the race, and in 2014 and 2016, Daniel didn't really have anything. And so far in 2019, he's already had two failures that have led to him losing points. So you may think, oh, you know, poor Daniel Ricciardo, but he decided to go to Renault. It was his decision. Red Bull absolutely would have allowed him to stay, but he decided to go to Renault, which was, even if it did work, 
a very big risk. And now Daniel has to suck it up and hope that Renault, for the first time since 2014, actually do something right. The chances of that are pretty much none. And because of that, Max Verstappen and Red Bull are now laughing at you in Honda. I'm sure it was worth it, Daniel. And when I say that, I mean, of course, your salary. Because that's the only benefit of you being where you are right now. But guys, let me know in the comments section, what do you think about Daniel Ricciardo and Renault's history? Is it a match made in heaven, which I think, of course? And what are your best memories of this wonderful partnership? Let me know in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. My next video is coming tomorrow and it will be a recorded podcast coming out at 3 p.m. UK time where me and Nib are going to be previewing the 2019 Belgian Grand Prix. So until then, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.